in this video, let's go and work on one where we have multiplication as well as subtraction. Now, you might look at a problem like this and say, ah, yeah, that looks like way too complicated. I don't even want to try this problem. But let's just break it down step by step because, you know, if you look at a problem like this, if you just kind of follow things like one step at a time, it's actually not that difficult. And this is actually a pretty straightforward problem. As long as you know how to multiply rational expressions and you know how to subtract rational expressions and you know a little bit of factoring, okay? So the first thing I want you to recognize is we know from the order of operations, right? Way back in the day when we learned this, that we're always going to multiply before we go ahead and subtract. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna focus right now on multiplying fractions. And if you forgot how to multiply rational expressions, what I want you to do is just kind of like think of numbers. All right, so when we're multiplying numbers, or when we're multiplying fractions with numbers, remember we just multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. We don't care about the common denominator. That's why a lot of students love multiplying fractions. So three times two is gonna equal six, four times three is equal to 12. Now, the one thing I want you to remember, right, and this is kind of like, again, another arch nemesis for so many students, when we're multiplying fractions or when we're doing any fraction operation, always look to simplify. What is something in the numerator and the denominator that I can divide into both of them that I can reduce this fraction? And hopefully you recognize I can divide a six in the numerator and denominator, so therefore this can be a simplified version of just one half. Now, why do I bring that up? Because sometimes you also wanna look into simplifying before you multiply, right? Now these are pretty small numbers, but if I had like really bigger numbers, like if I had big numbers, you'd probably wanna simplify them first before doing the multiplication. Otherwise, you're gonna have even bigger numbers, right? A big number times another big number is gonna get even bigger. So you always wanna to look to simplify first, as well as simplify at the end. And in this example, before I go ahead and multiply these out, I have these polynomials. It looks pretty confusing and, and in my opinion. So what I wanna do is say, all right, is there anything I can simplify? Now, when we're dealing with fractions, right, we're looking into, you know, simplifying, reducing them. When we're looking into polynomials, we're gonna to look to simplifying them by factoring. And I can't really factor this, 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 but here I recognize the difference of two squares. I know I can factor an x squared minus 36 as an x minus six times an x plus six. And then over here, I recognize I have a four, right, and an eight. Now, the important thing you gotta recognize is every single expression here, I'm gonna put these in parentheses so you can see what's going on. Between these terms, right, that are in parentheses, everything is technically separated by multiplication. You can put a multiplication in the numerator and denominator, like if you multiply straight across, all these terms are separated by multiplication, right? So that's important because when terms are separated by multiplication, you can reduce them. I can now divide out the x plus sixes in the numerator and the denominator, and I can reduce a four over eight into a one half, all right? So now when I go ahead and multiply this out, I'm gonna be left with a one times nothing else, right? Those. Uh, or sorry, one times x, okay, that's gonna be good. So I'll have a one times x, that got divided out, um, that'd be four, yeah, one, so that's gonna be one, so it's gonna be a x. And then in the denominator over here, I'm just gonna have a x minus six times two. And therefore that's gonna be minus a three times an x minus six. Now, it's really, 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 really important that you recognize I put this by uh, x minus six um, in parentheses. And the reason why I did that is because when I wanna simplify these with parentheses, what I wanna be able to do here is um, I, I need to make sure I get common denominators, right? Multiplying fractions, you just multiply straight across. You don't really care what the denominators are. In this example, we gotta make sure we have common denominators before we can combine them. That means adding or subtracting them. So here I have an x minus six. Here I have a two times x minus six. So to get these to be common denominators, what I'm gonna need to do is multiply by two. All right, now what you can see I have is, the, it going, is going to be a x um, minus a six in this case. And, and therefore I can keep that all over my common denominator. Now, again, you recognize here, I technically, I technically can go ahead and rewrite this as a one times an x minus six. Now you can see my x minus sixes are going to divide out and I'm just gonna be left with a final answer of one half. So I took this whole crazy expression and I reduced it all the way down to a one half. Now, if we're gonna include our excluded values, just because all the x's got simplified out, does not mean we don't have any more excluded values. Our excluded values are still gonna be x cannot equal a six or a negative six because those would make my denominator um, zero for going back from my original equation. So make sure you go ahead and do that when you need to go ahead and create your excluded values. Now, this was me simplifying a rational expression with multiplication and subtraction. In the next example, I'll simplify a rational expression with division and addition. I'll see you in the next video.